Hey everyone! This is the tutorial for creating 3D room designs on OleoBoard. Um, we had a lot of requests for this tutorial, so I'm basically going to take some time today to show you how to create a 3D space using OleoBoard tools um, and how to manipulate images on your mood board to create more of a 3D look. So one of the easiest ways to create a 3D room design on OleoBoard is to start with an empty room image. You can use this as your backdrop to give you a little bit of a 3D space to work with. Uh, you can grab these images from anywhere online or you can browse OleoBoard sets. Um, there are a number of empty room images currently circulating around on OleoBoard, so you can grab anywhere from probably 30 empty spaces on OleoBoard to start your room design. This is the room that I am going to be starting with. Uh, I kind of fell in love with the yellow curtains, so I'm going to try to incorporate that into my color scheme. And one of the things that you should always keep in mind when creating your 3D room is that you want to start from the back of the room and work your way forward. When, you, when you're working with OleoBoard, you're working with layers, so it's very easy, well, it will make it easy for you to start from the back of the room and work your way forward instead of just randomly placing things on the canvas. So I'm going to start by adding in, let's see here, let's start by adding in a sofa against this back wall. And you don't have to worry about these little bits of white here. You're going to find that as you build out your room, that sort of thing is going to get hidden with the other items that you add onto your board. So let's bring in a rug. Now you'll notice that the rug is sitting on top of the sofa. Obviously that doesn't work for us because it doesn't fit with the perspective. So what we want to do is tuck this rug underneath the sofa. So to do that, come up to your blue toolbar and you're going to see these options up here. What, this one suggests that you can move an item back one layer. This suggests that you can move an item forward one layer. This will take it all the way to the front and this will take it all the way to the back. So we just need to tuck it behind the sofa. So we'll just hit back one. And now it's tucked underneath the sofa and looks as if the sofa is sitting on top of that rug. Okay, so let's move forward here with a coffee table. Now, I love the coffee table, but I absolutely do not want this white background attached to it. So to get rid of the white background, what we need to do is we go up to the background tool option on our toolbar and click this checkbox that says remove. That'll remove the white from your coffee table and give you just the basic shape to work with so that you can make it fit more within the actual space you're working with. I'm going to increase the size of the sofa a little bit just to give us a bit more to work with. Now. You don't want to have just the basics sitting around in your room, so let's add in a few accents. I'm going to bring in this, this fun pillow here, and I'm going to scale it down. But sometimes when you scale down items, it can rotate at the same time. So if you don't want that to happen, come up to your toolbar and hit the rotation lock option. When you have that checked, the item will no longer rotate as you scale. It'll just go up and down as you like. So scale it to the size you want, slide it in place, and drag another one on. So we're going to lock this one too, because I don't want to deal with rotation. Scale it down, and lock it in place. You can do the same with the accents that you add to your coffee table. Just scale it down. Remember to lock here and scale down. Okay, now let's add in some fun accent chairs. So I found this chair, which I love because it kind of plays off of the color of the curtains. But again, we have this white background on it and we don't want that white background. So we're going to come back up to our background removal tool, check the, in the checkbox. Now you notice that it pulled some of it, but it didn't pull all of it. So this particular image is going to need to be worked on a little bit more in our advanced options. So let's come back up to our background tool and click on advanced options. Now you're going to see that 
The top half of the screen provides you an image of what the actual item is, and the bottom half of the screen shows you what the item looks like on your board. So we've got all this extra white stuff that we just don't want. Um, if it's hard to tell what's going on in the background because of this checkered box, you can switch the options here. I prefer the dark gray option because it gives me a clearer view of what I don't want in my image. So now that we have that set up, let's go up to our toolbar here. And I'm going to select the sample color option with this little eye dauber. Now we want to remove all of this white stuff on, our, on the image. So I'm going to select that white space on the above image and it's going to show how it deletes it on the bottom one, which is actually what's going to show up on our mood board. So you can see that it removed quite a bit of the white. Now it's still a little bit fuzzy here, so let's try to clean this image up a little bit more to give us more of a professional look to our board. To do that, we want to come up to this tool right here, Adjust Darkest Color Removed. Now if you pull on this toggle, you'll see that it'll add more white or remove more white based on where you take it. So, if you continue to drag it to the left, you'll notice it'll remove your image altogether. We don't want to do that. We just want to take away enough white to get rid of the fuzzy edges and keep a clean look to the chair. So I like the way that looks. So when you are happy with your look, just come up to this orange Apply Changes button and click on it. And now we have a clean chair image that we can use. I'll pull in the other one to show you what we started with. This is what we started with. And this is what we're ending up with. So the advanced background option is an amazing tool to use um, if you're looking for a really clean, precise look to your board. Okay, so let's flip this chair the other way because I don't want it facing that way. So we come up to orientation and we're going to flip our chair. And we're going to want to make sure that it's scaled appropriately. It's got to be a little bit larger in size because it's sitting in the forefront, but not too big. Okay, so now let's drag in some additional seating options. This is a small space, so we're going to use things that are, that'll give extra seating options if people are over for chatting, but not take up too much space for the rest of the time that you would be sitting in this room. Now, again, you want to remember that you're playing with perspective here, so any item that's in the background should be a little bit smaller than those that are in the front. Okay, so we've got a bit of a room that we're working with here. It's turning out nicely. Um, let's add a few extra flourishes to the room to give it a little bit more life. So I found this bookcase that I love because it's a little bit more unique than the standard bookcases. Again, we've got a little bit of gray around the border here. We don't really want that because I'm gonna put this onto this back wall here. So I'm gonna use our crop tool and I'm going to cut out any of the image that I don't want added to my board. I'm just going to keep what I want and cut out the rest. So to do that, what you're going to do is you're going to pull on these orange corners and drag it in to keep what you want and remove the rest. So everything that we want to get rid of is outside of these orange corners. When you're happy with what you have, uh, select the orange button that says Apply Changes. And now we've got a clean bookcase to work with. So I'm going to throw onto this back wall here. I'm just going to center it. And I'm going to move my chair around. Whoops. Got to be careful with that scale tool. There we go. So I'm just going to move that around a little bit to center this bookcase. Okay, perfect. We could still use a little bit more on the back wall, so let's add, a, some, let's add some more artwork. I found these guys. I love them, but I don't want to put them on the wall together, and I definitely don't want all of this extra stuff that's kind of sticking around in the, that's been photographed into it as well. So what we want to do is we want to go back up to our toolbar and use the crop tool. I am just going to pull on these orange corners until I'm happy with what I've selected. And then I'm going to hit Apply Changes. And now we can scale. Let's lock the rotation again so we don't have to worry about that. Now we can scale the artwork to fit in line with the size of the uh, bookcase. 
So I'm just going to roughly do this. Okay, so I like having this one on this side. I want to add another one to this side. So let's duplicate our artwork. We're going to duplicate this artwork, drag it over, and then because I want the other jellyfish that was seen in the photograph originally, let's go back to the crop tool, slide over these corners, and select the other jellyfish. And because we use the crop or because we use the duplicate tool to begin with, these two pieces are now the exact same size. So you don't have to go around rescaling your artwork. You just have to duplicate things and then play around with the crop. Okay. Now I don't know about you guys, but when I'm creating 3D spaces, I don't really like well, it's not a question of not really liking, but I do like having a clean edge to the outer the outer edges of my board. It makes it feel more like a photograph snapshot instead of items that have been thrown onto a board. So what I like to do is I like to crop any items that are hanging over the edges. So if I take this rug and I'm just going to bring up my crop tool again, cut off the feet a little bit and then shift it back up, I can get a cleaner look to my board. I'm going to do the same with this chair. Crop tool again cut off the legs a little bit and then just slide it into place. Okay, so now that we have our chair in place, let's bring in a few other accents to make this place feel like it's a little bit more lived in, like somebody's actually spending their time in the room. So I'm going to add in a few other accents. I found this arch lamp that I love, so we're going to add this one in. I don't want it facing this way though, so I'm going to flip it around and make it face the other way. So it's kind of hovering right over our coffee table. Okay, so now that we have it over our coffee table, that looks great, but I don't want it sitting on top of this chair. So the easiest thing you can do is just select the chair and bring that to the front. And now it looks like it's tucked in behind there. So we can also add in, this space is a little bit empty as well right now. So let's add in a nice bookcase. I'm just going to play around with the scale a little bit. Okay, I'm going to tuck it. I'm actually going to pull this chair forward. And I'm also going to crop this off because like I said, I like having a clean line on my, on my mood board. So I'm going to crop the bookcase a little bit just to get rid of the extra edges. Tuck that back into place. And then you can continue to add in a bunch of accents to your bookcase as well. Um, I've got some books here that I'm going to throw into the design just to make it feel a little bit more lived in. You can crop the books down get rid of any fuzzy edges or things like that. Again, I'm going to hit the lock rotation, scale these books down, and tuck them right into my bookcase. And you can duplicate these as many times as you want if you wanted to fill out your bookcase a little bit more. Duplicate it again. Just kind of fill out the full length. So it's completely up to you. You can add more pillows here or do whatever you want with your room. I'm just throwing out options to give you an idea of what you can do. For any Star Wars fans out there, we've got a Darth Vader clock. Um, so I'm going to throw him into the bookshelf as well. I'm going to go back into my uh, background removal tool because we've got a little bit of a fuzzy edge here that I don't want. So I'm going to hit the sample color, click on the gray, it removes all the gray from around here. Now that we're happy with the way this looks, I'm going to hit Apply Changes. And I'm going to crop him down because he's not going to really fit on my bookshelf as is. Things like that. Things like this are just, just to add a little bit more to your board. So, anyway, so that is basically my 3D ring design.